What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. Right behind me, that in the 1970s was known as the Windmill Dinner Theater. It's now a car rental place. But an actor by the name of Bob Crane. Now, you may not know Bob Crane. You may know Bob Crane. Hogan's Heroes, you've probably seen maybe an episode or you've heard of Hogan's Heroes as a popular, popular show way back in the 60s. Ran for six seasons. Bob Crane was the star. He played Hogan. Now, Bob Crane was a beloved actor. He had thousands of fans. Because of Hogan's Heroes, he was also, he was a popular DJ in Los Angeles before. And then he got on the Donna Reed show and he became just, uh, and then he got his own show, Hogan's Heroes. And he skyrocketed to fame. But like a lot of actors who are on a successful show, it's hard to get work after that because you're typecast. Uh, you can't, you, you got to go on to some, try something else. He didn't want to do dinner theater, but that's what he had to do to make ends meet. He was doing dinner theater right here. That's the Windmill Dinner Theater and doing a play called Beginner's Luck here in Scottsdale. So like I said, Bob Crane was beloved, a beloved actor. And that Hogan's Heroes theme, that's a really popular theme. That's him playing the drums. He was a drummer too. And he came to Scottsdale to do dinner theater. And it was here in Scottsdale that he was murdered. Now the question is, why exactly was he murdered? Well, Bob Crane had a different side that the public didn't know about. During the run of Hogan's Heroes, now there's discrepancies about when he met a gentleman by the name of John Carpenter. Not that John Carpenter, this John Carpenter. He was an audiovisual expert and he often hooked up stars with the latest in video and like I said, audio stereo equipment. And Richard Dawson, Family Feud, he was on Hogan's Heroes and he introduced John Carpenter to Bob Crane. Now, it's been, it's been said that he met him afterwards. I've read two different conflicting stories. Regardless, he met a man named John Carpenter. Now, what Bob Crane did with this video equipment was he videotaped all of his sexual encounters with women. He was married with kids but he had many, 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 many affairs. And then he divorced his wife and remarried his co-star from Hogan's Heroes, but started, kept at it, having sex with a lot of women. And when I say a lot, I'm talking, not to be, no, I'm not trying to make a joke out of it, but I'm talking like Motley Crue numbers, like Tommy Lee numbers, like, Gene Simmons numbers. Bob Crane, this guy was into some weird stuff. Well, not, I mean, I don't know how weird. I mean, he was videotaping himself having sex with a lot of women. And John Carpenter was his partner, partner in all of this. Together, he would often introduce John Carpenter as manager, and that's how they'd pick up women. He was a star of Hogan's Heroes. John Carpenter used Bob Crane to meet women and they videotaped the sexual encounters together. They became best friends, tighter than tight. So, I have to lean on my car here for a second. It's very hot here in Scottsdale, of course. I've done such a deep dive into this case and uh, listened to so many podcasts, read so much about it. Now, his son said that all the women knew that they were being videotaped. And then Scottsdale police who investigated the crime said that when they showed some of the women and they had no clue, they said they did not know. So that's, yeah, you know, did they know, did they not know? I'm not sure about that. I don't know if we will ever know the answer, but I mean, if the women have said that they didn't know, I believe that they didn't know. A lot of them did not know they were being videotaped. And this is in the early days. I mean, we're talking huge, huge video cassettes, not like VHS tapes from the 80s. These you know, like giant ones. There's a movie made about it called Autofocus with Greg Kinnear. It's an incredible movie. Greg Kinnear plays Hogan and um, Willem Dafoe plays John Carpenter. It's 
a great movie. Now, a lot of it has been said that it's not true to fact that they've made up a lot. They took a lot of poetic license with uh, the story. Uh, especially his son has said like most of it's not true like you know but I mean they get a lot of it right about the Hogan's heroes and, and, and his death and his horrific death so I'm going to take you in a moment to where he was murdered because he was staying here at a condo here in uh, Scottsdale it's called the Winf uh, Winfield Apartments I believe and that's called Winfield Condos find out when I get when I get there I can't remember now exactly but it was right here that he was performing I mean this is just a strip plaza in Scottsdale it's uh nothing wrong with doing dinner theater but I mean he was the toast of Hollywood for a long time I mean it's got to be humbling but it didn't stop him from doing what he liked to do which was uh have a lot of sex with a lot a lot of women he was still trading on his fame and, and able to uh, seduce women into going to bed with him. What happened was he decided to cut ties with John Carpenter after a while. Like they were, they worked together for a long time. That was their, that, you know, orgies. You name it. That's what they did. I'm sorry if I'm being a little graphic for my channel, but this is what they did. He decided to cut ties with John Carpenter. So the theory is that John Carpenter murdered Bob Crane. And Bob, uh, sorry, John Carpenter is uh, deceased now. I think it's fairly known that it's probably, it was probably him. I think I can say that without, um, well, I think it's fairly obvious. He was murdered with a tri camera tripod. And John, it was just a couple of days after he cut ties with John Carpenter, who was here in Scottsdale, knew where he was staying get in had motive and there's a few other sort of details I'm gonna get into when we get to the apartment uh, where he was murdered so we're gonna drive over there right now but there it is behind me that's where he was performing right here Uh, windy out here in this part now it's I showed you a bit of the drive it's 
about a 10 minute drive from the dinner theater. These are the condoms behind me where Bob Crane was murdered. And I'm gonna take a drive in, show you the exact condom. I mean, would I love to go inside? Yeah, I would, it's a private home. Can't now. Um, oh, I, can't, I don't think can't. I, it's been sold and resold many times. One owner said that they had a lot of paranormal experiences in the, with the toilet flushing and things like that. Um, thought the presence in the room where he was murdered those sorts of things believe what you want now as I'm talking I'm gonna I guess I'll, what I'll do is I'll cut away to because uh, I've already driven through it and uh, it's there's lots of like it looks like construction going on or something inside it's really hard to tell exact right around where his condo where his apartment was there's the Winfield place apartments back then that's where he was staying uh, so it's really hard to park and you know it's somebody's private place so it's uh, I'm gonna be quick so I'll show you that footage so John Carpenter it, it you know other people said that whoever murdered Bob Crane it could have been a jealous boyfriend an angry father of one of the younger ladies that he slept with possibly you know I don't, he didn't sleep with underage I'm talking about you know like 19 20 21 I'm not sure he slept with eight, women of all types all ages I, from what I guess to tell, it, it, I don't know if he had a specific type, I'm not sure, but he he just, I, he had a lot of sex. Now, John Carpenter really needed Bob Crane to get women. That was his ticket to getting women. So they both had a pretty uh, ferocious sexual addiction, to say the least. And that's something that came out of a Bob Crane after he passed. And people were shocked that, you know, Hogan, from Hogan's Heroes, could have such a different side to him. He was murdered here in the bedroom. He's found by his co-star, Victoria something. Uh, Victoria, the co-star in the, in, the, in the play that they were doing. She discovered the next day when he didn't show up for a rehearsal. Now, there are graphic, graphic uh, crime scene photos online, which you can look up if you want. I'm not gonna include them in my video. I've seen them. And there's a short video you can see of the crime scene that they took at the time. Uh, Videotape, one of the first ones I believe they've ever done. It's irony, and the other piece of irony, of course, I already mentioned, was he was killed with a tripod. Now that is what I think leads me to believe it's John Carpenter. He was angry that the friendship was over. He was here in Scottsdale. There was, he was killed with a piece of camera equipment. Now, the police and the coroner, they did what is now looked upon as a pretty terrible job of uh, investigating the crime scene. He, one thing that he had, and he had an electrical cord from a lamp tied around his neck, but it was the two fatal blows, the two blows to the head from the tripod that killed him. Another thing that they didn't do was, and this is graphic, but there was semen on his body. They didn't take any samples of it. And I believe it was the coroner who was, at the, who was there uh, at the time, said, why bother? You know, he got off one last time. What does it matter? They assumed it was his. Now, most people assume that it was the murderers that did that over top of the dead body afterwards. There's one kind of final F you to Bob Crane. This was a crime of severe anger. I mean, it wasn't. Oh, I don't. It's, there's overkill when they just keep kill. When they just kill, when the person's dead, but they keep going. Jody Arias comes to mind. Uh, something like that. But this is two blows. But then, looks like possibly the the murderer masturbated over his corpse, his dead body. They never tested it. But, uh, John Carpenter went up for charges on manslaughter in 1994. He was acquitted. So he was never, uh, it was never proven that he did the crime. He died a few years later. It's classified as unknown. That's where the case is, it's unknown. It's not a closed case, it's just, it's probably never gonna be solved now. I mean, the crime scene was botched, not enough evidence was taken from the crime scene. And the main suspect, who was charged, but then acquitted, is now deceased as well. 
was right in here. That famous, famous actor, Bob Crane. Here is where he was murdered. It's a very, very big complex inside. Very, very big. Huge. All in there. It stretches from there, excuse me, right from there, all the way down to that sign, which is what I showed you near, uh, earlier. Right down there. That's it, right there. All right, now we're going to Los Angeles. I'm gonna show you Bob Crane's final resting spot. Okay. So that's a bit of a drive and I'm not doing that today. So the video will pick up at Pierce Brothers in uh, Westwood. And here we are right here. This is the final resting place of Bob Crane. AKA Colonel Hogan, star of Hogan's Heroes 1965-71, knee Robert Edward Crane, father of Deborah Karen Anna Marie Robert Scott Crane. July 13th, 1928 to June 29th, 1978. And there he is with his co-star beside him. And wife. This is Bob Crane. Sigrid Valdez. And it reads here. The wind blows o'er the plains through the wild wheat, wild wheat that's never reaped. Wild wind, wild wind, wild wheat. And then the stillness comes in the heat of August sun. The earth is parched and dry. All living now must die. Wild wheat against the sky. Once young, now brown and dry. All signs of life are gone. Yet in still earth, the roots live on. It's seeds of love and sown. Wind blown for field, far field. All little ones must fly. Wild wheat will never die. Humanist. Darwin. And that's the story of Bob Crane. <sighs> Crazy story, I know. This is uh, Pierce Brothers, Westwood Memorial Village, here in Los Angeles, just off of Wilshire. All right, thanks for watching. Rest in peace, Bob Crane. Peace out.